Well, here we are. Thoughts from the office. Rednecks pride outdoors. I believe it's April 10th or 11th. Oh, it's the 12th. April 12th. Warm day. Nice, nice. It's not super hot. It's just, just cool enough to... It's hot, just hot enough to be short sleeve, but just cool enough to not raise up a sweat. You understand what I'm saying there? Nice day. Nice day. Groundhogs are coming out of the holes like crazy. Raccoon jobs are coming in like crazy. But that's not what this video is for. We're getting ready to go into the uh, convention uh, season. And uh, everybody knows the month of June is when the conventions theoretically start. All right? And every experienced trapper looks at these conventions in a different way than a lot of you new trappers will. Uh, experienced trappers who's been to a few conventions will tell you that's the place to learn. That's the place to get your products. That's the place to get your brain ticking with the demos and, and all that. The convention is just a, a good place to be. And, and when you go to the conventions and you're used to going to them, when you don't go, you, you really miss them. Okay. Um, June, conventions are cranking up and, and you may see some, you may see a couple more rendezvous being added this year for New Jersey folks. So keep an eye out. You know, you brand new trappers, if you see a, a rendezvous or convention close to you, a mini convention one day, you know, like might, might pay you to go to it. But anyway, what sparked this uh, video is I was thinking back a few years ago, I was at a, at a rendezvous type thing. And um, there was a round table being done. And I'm sitting there. I may or may not have been a part of it, but it doesn't matter. The, uh, the round table was, was uh, going very well. And uh, the folks was asking questions. And these two gentlemen up there was, was answering pretty quick and, a, and a, a newer trapper was near me and he said uh, they're both pretty good aren't they and I said yeah they are yeah they are I said but the one on the left is better than the one on the right and the and the the newer trapper looked at me and goes, how can you tell? They're, and I said, well, why do you think I said that? And he goes, I don't know. He said, because they're both answering the questions and they're both essentially saying the same thing as, as, as each other. He said, so it, it, it's almost like they know each other. They, they, they know the same. And I said, they do. And he got confused and he looked at me. And I could see he was perplexed a little bit. And I said, why do you think I said that? And he said, I don't know. And I said, the truth of the matter is they both know the same. But the one on the left is a better trapper with that knowledge. The one on the right is good but the one on the left is better with that knowledge. Because I don't understand. I said that one on the right does what he needs to do when he sees he needs to do it. But the one on the left does what he needs to do way before he sees he needs to do it. You see, that's the difference. The one that can see 
the situation and knows what he's got to do before he does it is usually going to be the better driver. I didn't say catch more. Well, what do you mean by that, Jonesy? Isn't the better trapper the one that's going to catch more? No, not all the time. You see, the one that catches more is usually the one with a couple different things, scenarios. The number one, he's probably in a really, really good area where there's a population. So it's easier for them to catch more. The one who catches more obviously knows the critter, but they have the time to do it. And third, they have the drive to do it. But that doesn't mean he's the best trapper. Because a lot of times that old boy that doesn't have the time, doesn't have the drive. Let's face it, a lot of good old trappers. There's a lot of trappers that's old and just don't have the drive to go out and catch the numbers that they used to. But they got the knowledge. They get into ground where the critters is at. And they can catch critters without pushing themselves really, really hard. You say, Josie, what's the point of this video? We just went through a trapping course. 69 folks in that trapping course. 69 of them. That was uh, April 6th and 7th. 69 people came to a two-day Saturday and Sunday trapping course. And I could look at a few of them and say, they're going to be some top-notch trappers. But everyone in that class, everyone in that class, their brain was going on how to catch numbers, how to catch this, how to catch that. And what they was thinking as a new trapper is going to make some of them pull the hair out and turn gray. Because everything they're thinking on was methods, method, 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 method. I ain't got nothing against methods. Methods, method is the one that, method is what we do to catch the animal. But being a real good trapper is understanding which method to use. So my challenge to the new trappers that just went through the course, you've got all summer long, you heard us talk about hanging cable. <clears throat> and I use the word setting cable because that's what I do, I set cable. I don't hang it. I'm as particular about the loop and setting it. I just don't show it. So I set a loop. I don't hang it. I set it. So you new trappers, learn how to set your cable and learn the difference between hanging and setting. Get out in the woods, in the forest, in the fields all summer long and study animal travel routes. Get your cameras up, the easiest thing to learn with. Get your cameras up. Go to a spot. Look at that, look at that spot and say, I wonder how many critters are going through this thing. And set that camera up for three days. Put a marker on that trail so that when that camera goes off, you can see the head position of the critter 
but more importantly, that marker, based on how you put those that marker in there, you know the height of that animal's head, which starts to give you an understanding where you need to put the loop size and height in that scenario. In that scenario, where you're looking at the floor, is the floor open, is the floor cluttered? You're looking at the ceiling, is the floor, is the ceiling open or is it low? Is it high? We don't have time to go into all that stuff. I cover that when I'm when I'm doing instructions on setting cables. But you practice it. You look at it. You 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 you, you get all the, the the videos you can and you learn as much as you can and you look at how many different uh, philosophies are out there and I'm gonna tell you what there's a bunch of them out there now I'm gonna be the first one to say to you there's a lot of guys out there that are making videos and um, well we just leave it at that heck there's probably people saying that about my videos looking at me and saying he shouldn't be making any videos right but you new trappers that just took this course all 69 of you like I told you I bet half of you don't buy the trapping license in November but half of you will prove me wrong prove me wrong I want to see 69 new trapping licenses this year. And how you're going to do that is you're going to spend all summer in this newfound world that you've just entered into. There's a couple old boys there, and I'll mention their names. There was Harry Beal's grandson was there. He's going to be, he's going to be a good trapper. He's going to be a good trapper. Talking to him and his dad... I said, to his, I said to his grandson, Harry Beale's grandson, I said, you carry on your grandfather's legacy. You carry that on. There's a few other old boys there. They're being mentored by a few good trappers. Ken Weldon. We're teaching these guys so much, dog on it. <laughs> this is just a jawing video, but gather something out of it. Say, just the guy's just talking. No, there's a lot of stuff in here that I'm giving you. Just I'm just not telling you I'm giving it to you. Based on 55 years as a fur trapper. First first portion of my life up until 1986 I was a foot trap man literally a foot trap man we lost the foot traps in 84 we had to stop using them in 86 and in 86 I found out I wasn't as gooder as I thought I was and I needed to get gooder I remember trying to make the cage strap work pull my hair out we didn't have the foot trap anymore I had to use the cage strap I remember getting this piece of cable and having no stinking idea what I was doing with that thing and the frustration I still remember that and I bought uh, O'Gorman's uh, video on snaring and and uh, Dan Bizarne's book and uh, was it Gregerson and Thompson reading everything I possibly could about snaring and still just beat my head against the wall trying to figure it out old Newt and me yeah that's right Newt and I went, we, Newt and I go way back and I remember sitting there in 86 and 87 with Newt 
both of us just saying, these stinking things don't work, man. And by 1990, Newton, I was given snaring courses to other people. Because we found out they do work. The difference was Newt and I had the dedication and the drive to figure these things out. Remember I told you about dedication and drive? A lot of critters didn't hurt either. This is a video for you new trappers. You old timers, you don't need to be even looking at this. You've probably already hung up by now. You've already said, I ain't want listen to this guy. This guy's just jawing. He ain't just on. This. And I am. To you old timers, I ain't going to give you nothing because you can hurt me. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you old timers how to do things. You can hurt me. You can give me a run for my money. But you new trappers, I'll give you what you need. I'm not the world's greatest trapper. You already heard me say that. And I honestly believe that. I am not the world's greatest trapper. But I'm good enough. I'm good enough to make my living from it. And the reason I've been able to make my living from it is because God's blessed me. And I asked God as a 21-year-old kid to give me the knowledge of the outdoors and the understanding of the animal. And he did. you got to do too you you gotta you got to get the drive and the dedication and the want to do this I don't know how many more years we got trapping left things are looking good bad you know I just left a, a groundhog job gave a bid on a groundhog job and we're gonna go in and we're gonna catch quite a few groundhogs out of that and and, and God's blessed me to be able to do that now, most of, most of you uh, won't, all right? But the point I'm trying to make to you is this. If you want to become a good trapper, you got to work at it. And there's no off-season. There is no off-season. There's an off-season for catching them, but there's no off-season for learning. You're learning, you're learning, you're learning. And when you get to the point that you're good, and you will, you will get to the point you're good. May take two years, may take five years, may take 20 years, I don't know. But at some point, you will become good. And here's where most trappers fail. They get to the point that they're good. They know they're good. And they're happy with being good. And they don't get gooder. They stop. And stay good. Well, got another job up here. I've got to go check. And uh, it's getting late, about 5.15. I don't feel like working late tonight. It's Friday night. I need to get home to that little blonde-haired, blue-eyed woman that I'm married to. By the way, that little blonde-haired, blue-eyed woman that Soaking wet may weigh 115 pounds. Can out trap most folks with a cage trap. <laughs> she puts a hurting on me. Alright. A nonsense video. No real point. Plenty of stuff in there though if you're looking for it. If you ain't looking for it, you ain't going to get nothing out of it. But if you're looking for it, there's plenty of stuff in here. Again, start looking in May. Start looking to see where these rendezvous and these uh, traffic conventions are going to start showing up. Even the little ones, even the little mini, mini rendezvous, you will get something out of them.
Information comes from conversation. I'm going to leave it there. Thoughts from the office. Red next bright outdoors. I'll catch you later.